Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going to talk about how to take simple acoustic guitar parts and spice things up in your production. So if you're like me and you're a singer-songwriter, when you first got into recording, you really wanted to know how to capture a great acoustic guitar recording. Then you wanted to learn how to capture good vocals. Then your focus switched to learning how to mix those sounds. How do I make them sound good once I mix everything together? One of the things you probably don't think about or at least I didn't for a long time, is between the recording and the mixing process is this whole idea of what part do I actually play? What do I record once I sit down with guitar in hand and am ready to record? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, you don't have to be some sort of virtuoso lead guitarist. I'm not. I'm going to show you how to play a simple chord progression and some things you can do to really up your game and make things more interesting and even engaging, uh, even if you're doing a simple guitar vocal production. Now, it needs to be said right out of the gate, a single guitar track and a single vocal track can be plenty. Sometimes, some of the best songs you've heard, uh, what comes to mind is um, Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah. It's an electric guitar, but it's one track of electric and one vocal mic, and it's incredible. So don't feel like after watching this video, you have to do everything I'm going to show you in every song you produce. Sometimes a simple is better. But if you're wanting to learn some new ways to take your tracks to a new level and to add some interesting elements, that's what this is all about. So let's start off with a simple eight bar progression. Uh, it's in the key of C. And every note is pushed a little bit, which will make it a little more fun. Um, but I'm going to play that and then show you some things that we can do from there. One, two, three. So that's the backbone of the song, say maybe the intro and the verse progression. What can we do on top of that to just make it more interesting? As it stands by itself, it could totally work, but there are some really simple, simple things that you can do. If you can record that, you can also do these steps to make it even cooler and bigger. And it's not going to be appropriate for every song you ever record, but a lot of times it can take one song from going from one certain vibe to a different vibe that really works for the song. So the first thing we're going to try is just to literally double it. Play the exact same thing again on a separate track and pan the first one to the left and the second one to the right. Let's try that. So this obviously is called doubling. You've heard doubling on countless records with acoustic guitar, electric guitar. You can really double anything, including vocals. And what's cool about it is even though I'm playing the exact same chord progression with pretty much the exact same rhythm, there are lots of subtle differences between the two, which means if I pan one left and one right, I'm going to hear them separately, independently, and it's going to create this wide stereo image. And there's really nothing that quite does that for you. You can put all kinds of fun plugins and try choruses and delays and things like that to try to fake your way to a big wide stereo sound but one of the best ways to do it and the easiest is to simply hit record again on a second track record it a second time pan those suckers out left and right now there are some scenarios where you double something and it doesn't feel quite right uh, maybe it's too similar maybe it's more of an open tuned sound and it starts to sound kind of thin and phasey in those situations, if the straight double doesn't work, I'll reach for my favorite tool in the world, a capo, and play the same progression, the same rhythm, but just capoed up on the neck with a different voicing, and that almost always does the trick. Let's try that. One. Pretty cool, right? It has the same vibe as the first double, but now there's a different voicing, so we get even more of a separation between the two. The one on the left feels deeper and fuller, the one on the right still has some fullness to it, but it's higher up a different voicing and it just makes it that much more interesting. So those are a couple of ways to double your acoustic guitars. Now, the holy grail of this, and I've only started doing this in the last couple of years, but it works on some songs, triple the guitars. 
So in this instance, I would take guitar number one, which is the uncapoed version, and then have that one panned up the middle. And then later in the song, let's say that starts the song and does the first verse. And then at the chorus, I'll bring in two of these capoed guitars, just doubles of each other, panned left and right. Let's see what that sounds like. One. Very cool. That never gets old. Now, if you've never done doubling before, this will just, you'll, you'll spend the next several days in the studio just doubling stuff just to see what it sounds like because you can do this with almost anything and a lot of times you'll get really cool results. Couple words of warning. First of all, if you double everything in the song, it starts to lose the cool factor. Um, if everything's doubled and there's stuff on the left and stuff on the right and nothing really up the middle, you're losing something there and it starts to actually all kind of mush together into one big mono signal instead of that cool stereo spread that you had. So be selective about what things you decide to double and pan left and right. Second thing, and this is probably goes without saying, you'll need to be able to play in time to make the double thing work. There are probably a few timing errors here. I would go back and probably tighten those up a little bit. But in general, if it's really, really sloppy on the first take and then you record a second take that's also sloppy, you're gonna lose, it's gonna be more distracting than it is helpful. So get your timing in order and make sure that's working well. One way to think about this is if the if the rhythm of the part is fairly straightforward, doubling can work well. If it's really kind of syncopated, so I know this had a lot of pushes, but ultimately my right hand was just going I was just changing chords on the upstrokes, but the rhythm was just this all day. If you can play songs that have that type of pretty straight rhythm uh, at the core tend to work well for doubling. If it was something like this, Something like that probably wouldn't work well doubled. You can always try it. It won't take you, that's the cool thing about doubling. You could always just hit record and even just record an eight bar section of it and go back and listen and see if it works. Occasionally something like that doubled might work, but more often than not, that kind of part needs to be on its own. But more simple straight rhythm parts can easily be doubled to give you a much wider sound. Now, in all fairness, I didn't show you anything today that was revolutionary, but if you've never doubled before, it is an amazing tool that I am still exploring different ways to double things to add that interest and that effect that you just can't get from one thing. So add that to your tool belt, to your arsenal of things to try the next time you're in the studio. Pretty sure you're going to love it.